time for the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show brings you famous celebrities and amazing people from all over the world. Listen online at themikewagnershow.com and on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. And watch the interview on YouTube. So sit back and relax and enjoy the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs at below the competition way. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the themikewagnershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, also iTunes, Google Play, and Apple. You can also download the Mike Wagner Show on any mobile device and take the Mike Wagner Show with you and subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel to check out the video. We're here with a wonderful gentleman who is a professor. He's an expert on stress relief who worked in many in many areas, including sales, marketing, served as college professor and small business owner. And, of course, he's got his story and why he became a stress relief expert. He's the author of the Amazon book, Lighten Your Day, Fast, Easy, and Effective Stress Relief for When, yeah, shit happens, I say. It's a four-letter word. I mean, there's this no getting around it. So, ladies and gentlemen, live from sunny California, a very stress-free and the very talented Professor Pete Alexander. Professor Pete, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Mike, thanks for uh, having me. I really appreciate it. That's any time. So you've been a stress relief expert for a number of years who worked in sales, marketing, served as college professor, and a small business owner. You're also the author of um, the book on Amazon right now, Lighten Your Day, Fast, Easy, and Effective Stress Relief for When yeah, shit happens, or the S word. And um, also, it's uh, you tell people how to detect stress and um, manage what are the signs of stress. And, um, of course, uh, also share your experiences. And before we get to all that, um, tell us how I got started. In terms of stress or just in my career itself? Well, well, well first of all, starting with your career and then working a way over. Sure, sure. So uh, I started off in sales and uh, transitioned over to what I love to say the dark side of marketing after several years of successful sales and worked in uh, the medical device industry primarily. Mm -hmm. And then uh, during my my experience at the medical device uh, uh, industry, I also uh, taught several classes at the uh, uh, college level, both online and uh, in person. Enjoyed doing that. That got me to go and get my Ph.D., Mm-hmm. So that I could uh, continue to uh, work on my uh, my teaching skills, and along the way as well, because I didn't have enough on my plate, I decided to uh, uh, build a small uh, interior landscaping business that now has grown to be an extremely successful business in the Bay Area. And uh, after that, uh, transitioned uh, into stress relief when I finally. Uh, couldn't bear all the responsibilities that I had <laughs> all on my plate at once. Oh, my gosh. It sounds like what's happening in uh, every working man and woman in America as well, too, throughout the world. And you have an interesting story and uh, how you got to a point of stress relief. You were actually hospitalized at one point. You can just uh, tell us all about it. Sure, sure. So what it did was uh, it actually started in 2008. Uh, I had a perfect storm at one point. Uh, you know how... The mental and emotional stress that you, we get at one point becomes completely overwhelming. That's what happened to me. What all these different things that were going on, both professionally and personally, culminated in my diagnosis with stress induced diabetes. The problem was that I didn't listen to my body. Instead, I went ahead and continued to burn the candle at both ends for another 10 years until I ended up in the emergency room and with a severe case of diabetic ketoacidosis. And for the listeners, what that actually means in layman's terms is my body was eating itself alive because of my stress. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, wow. Yeah, it was, a, it was an epiphany moment for me because, 
either I did have to do something different at that point or else I may not be around to meet my future grandchildren. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, it just thinks about with um, the sales and marketing and, um, you know, the transition, college professor and small business owner. So so what was the transition about when it can't go from sales marketing to college professor and then from college professor to small business owner? What are the reasons for the transition? Well, uh, so I transitioned from sales into marketing because as a salesperson, I was calling up to the marketing department, you know, letting them know what I was seeing in the field, et cetera. And I always found like that I wasn't getting the attention of corporate that I believed I should because I was giving relevant uh, 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 live research in the field. And so I told myself if I ever transitioned into marketing, I would never do that. And I, I held my word. So when I went into marketing, I was very responsive to the field. And so when uh, I transitioned from marketing, I, I was learning all these different techniques that I had learned from an academic standpoint when I got my college degrees. And I realized that now that I have the real world experience, I can actually teach that to students of mine. And so transitioning to the, the uh, professorship, that was actually a lot of fun because I was able to make a difference in a different way. Mm. I was able to teach people the application of marketing. And so the academic, the theory was something that was supporting the actual application. And based on all the reviews I would get from my students, I was having, I was making a difference to them and I really enjoyed it. Mm. The, the, the funny thing about that is you really are able to make a difference if you do the right thing to a group of people um, each class. And with uh, a corporate marketing, there is the stress, the corporate stress of making sure that your projects are delivered on time, on budget or below budget. And what's always, you know, the, our, the marketing people can always appreciate this. Everybody is a critic of marketing. And so everybody thinks they know how to do marketing. And so, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times I would hear something like, well, uh, so-and-so thinks that uh, you should change the website. Like one person says that you should change the website. And it's like, okay, so one person does, so we should change it for everybody who actually likes the website. Mm-hmm. So things like that that people just don't get a, get a sense of. In sales, you have that issue of always having to deliver on the numbers, whether it's your monthly numbers, your quarterly numbers, your annual numbers. It's always, what have you done for me lately? So you're under the gun for that. And as a professor, you would think that, oh, okay, that must be a low-stress job. Absolutely not. If you want to deliver for the students, you are really moving the needle with those students, and constantly you're having to make sure to deliver to them and deliver to the universities that you're working for, making sure that you get the grades in on time, that you get your class uh, preparation in on time. You have to be able to deal with the different uh, emotions of each of the students, et cetera. So there is actually significant stress there. Mm-hmm. Plus, uh, pay doesn't, isn't worth uh, much at all, especially as an adjunct professor. So you have that issue as well. You have to juggle multiple uh, uh jobs because usually you can't afford to teach full time and actually live on that. Mm-hmm. So you have that as and, well. And I forgot to ask you which uh which which college did you um were a professor at? I forgot to ask you that question. Oh several, several. So uh UC oh, wow. Berkeley was one of them. Um and I also did UC Irvine. I also did um several universities online. That was the uh, things that you could uh, able to do when when uh, the internet started uh offering classes online. So I did both online and in person for for 12 years and it was it was a lot of fun, a lot of work, but <laughs> I I really enjoyed it. But at one point, you know, you just you don't have enough hours in the day. And uh, I was working full time. I had the small business as well. And, you know, it just something had to give in terms of my time. And that, unfortunately, was the, uh, the, the, the college classes that back in uh, 20, 20, 2012, 2013 was the last time I taught a class. Oh, wow. That was amazing, too. And uh, of all the universities you taught at, which one did you like the best? Definitely Berkeley. 
Uh, and the reason was is because the interesting dynamics of different students that you 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 get to uh, to meet. I worked uh, in several different departments, so I got to work with their international diploma program, where I was having students from all over the world. I was teaching the evening program, so those were the the students who were working during the day and were trying to get their degrees at night. And then I also got to work with just the, the daytime students as well as the online students, who were a plethora of different types of uh, uh, of backgrounds. So it was it was a lot of fun and get get to. Uh, meet so many different cultures that that to me was uh was, was the most fun mm, that is amazing too i'll we'll talk about your small business and your book as well too you listen to the mike wagner show at the mike wagner show.com powered by sonic web studios visit online at sonic web studios.com for all your needs look at a professional website without breaking your budget sonic web studios is the answer sonic web studios offers fast affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away call today at 1-800-303-3960 that's 1-800-303-3960 or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the themikewagnershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Apple, and Google Play. You can also take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device and subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel today. We're here with Professor Pete Alexander, stress relief expert who worked in sales, marketing, served as college professor for many universities in person and online, also small business owner, and um, he was hospitalized with ketoacidosis. Did I say that right? Diabetic ketoacidosis. Ketoacidosis. Okay, I just want to make sure I got it right. I had spelled phonetically. I just want to make sure I got it right. And you also able to, he's going to be sharing a story very soon. And he's got a book out on Amazon right now. He's the author of Lighten Your Day, Fast, Easy, and Effective Stress Relief for When Shit Happens, as they say. So so before we get your book as well, too, you seem to make a business of it. You've been a small business owner for quite some time. And um, tell us all about it and uh, what business did you run? So I, back in uh, 2005, I bought a failing interior landscaping business mm-hmm. and uh, turned it around to, uh, to become now uh, actually the fourth largest in the San Francisco Bay Area. Wow. So it's a thriving business doing really, really well. Uh, and I, I have a, a great staff and a great business partner that uh, make that business hum. And so I'm very grateful for that and grateful for the, the, the employees who work for, for that company. It's called Everything Grows. Everything grows. That sounds amazing and sounds like it's a really good time of year to be growing just about everything. And um, how is the growing season uh, by you guys so far in terms of landscape and uh, everything else? Oh, it's fantastic. We continue to grow each year. And that's primarily due to we take care of the, the, the customers. We're very focused on specific types of customers. And we uh, are very diligent in uh, making sure that our employees are taken care of and we bring in the right employees that fit our culture. Mm-hmm. And, and, and also, too, um, y- you know, when you when you bought this uh, business as well, too, did you have any interest in um, landscaping at the time? Did you take any experience or maybe just watched or something or, y- you know, or did you just simply learn along as you just bought the business and just simply say, this is how we're going to go and let's just do it? Yeah, it's kind of like a mix of a combination of what you said there. Uh, you know, I wasn't a landscaper. I mean, I wouldn't ki- I wouldn't call back when I was mowing neighbors' lawns back when I was a kid a, uh, a landscaping experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so it wasn't really uh, my forte. But what I was interested in was the fact that it was a type of business that was not your typical. Um, business that would be something that would just be all consuming. You know, the, the, the challenge for me is, is that I tend to run at full speed. And what happens is, is that, you know, something like, let's say if we had a restaurant or a retail store that had to be open seven days a week and was open 20 hours each, uh, uh, you know, each day, that's going to be something that I would end up working most of those hours just because that's the way I am. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted a business that actually had weekends off whenever possible and you wouldn't have to work uh, as late into the evenings as necessary unless it was a very specific customer who wanted us to take care of their, uh, their facility uh, off hours. But mm-hmm. uh, for the most part, it was, it was really good. And I did the smart thing uh, when first buying it 
basically just let it run the way that it was running at that time. I knew that it needed help because the numbers were showing that, but I didn't know, you know, you don't go in there and immediately change things without knowing what's going on. So mm. for the first few months, basically, I, I, I just kind of let observed everything. The, the small, we only had three employees at that time and, uh, you know, re- uh, rode along with them on their routes, met the customers, figured out what was what needed to be changed and then started implementing uh, the changes. And, you know, I took about, oh, you know, it was it was it had been losing business for about a year, year and a half. And so it, it, once a company goes into a, 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 a tailspin, it's hard getting to, it to stop. So, you know, I, I realized that, you know, I wasn't going to immediately turn it around to make it grow. I just had to make it level out. Mm-hmm. And once I got leveled out, then I started applying all my business knowledge to uh, figure out what it is that I needed to do to make it make it start growing again. And sure enough, once it got on the upward climb, then it just skyrocketed because you're just kind of building, building, building as you take care of customers. And uh, I'm, you know, as I said earlier, I'm very grateful for it and grateful for the staff we have and the business partner I have. And it's it's a, it's a wonderful business. That is amazing. That's a growing business for sure. No pun intended. And uh, what are some of the changes that you made that made the sales go up? And uh, how how'd you manage to uh, take care of the employees? Like, say, um, how it was different from the uh, previous ownership? Well, the previous ownership, it was kind of interesting. Um, the previous owner had bought the business for his wife. And apparently, right after they closed on the business, uh, his wife said, no, nah, it's not really something I want to do. Oh. And he was working full time. And so he just, you know, he was absentee big time. And so it was, you know, you really, he, he would do the absolute bare minimum just because he, he didn't want to want to run the business. Mm-hmm. So when I took over, the first thing I, I made clear to our employees was is that we're here for the long haul and we're serious about this and we're serious about listening to, you know, what you think it, we need to do differently, et cetera. So first and foremost, it was proving to the uh, uh, the employees that we had that we really were were in this business to, uh, to 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 make it last and to continue to grow it, and so that was first. It was so, sort of a culture change in terms of, of being serious about the business, and then as far as the customers, it was a matter of going in, meeting the customers in person, looking at how the service was, what it needed to be different. So, for example. One of the things we do is we guarantee our service. If plants are not looking healthy, we replace them out. And so I go into customers. I would do the quality control myself. So there's the owner looking at that. I would report to the customer, this is what I think we need to do. And I'd order the plants, bring them in. We'd go ahead and replace them. They saw that, oh, wow, somebody's taking serious uh, uh, this business seriously and values us as customers. And then what I started doing as well is, we had, uh, when I bought the business, the customers were just all over the place in terms of geography. Wow. And, you know, that's not efficient. So what I started doing is, okay, where are our customers? And I started making sales calls around those customers. Mm-hmm. Because if our, if, if our plant technicians are going into that, that building or, or that neighborhood anyway, well, it makes it a lot more efficient to start picking up other customers where they don't have to drive very far. Mm-hmm. And so that was a that was a key component too. So we started clustering the uh, the businesses and uh, using referrals. That was a real strong um, uh, aspect of the business, and really just delivering on what we promised. And mm-hmm. it, it just you know, and 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 customers. We, what we do now is we we do an annual survey. And we take a look at what that survey comes back with our customers and we follow up with any issues they might have. So every year we're doing that. We have a quality control person whose full-time duty is to go out there uh, and without letting the technicians know when they're going to be in their account, make sure to see what those accounts look like. Um, it's, it, it, it has made a phenomenal difference in our business. And, and we were the only one, uh, only landscaping business uh, in the Bay Area based on our, uh, uh, the plant uh, vendors that we have. They told us we were the only one to continue to grow during the, the downturn in 2008, 2009. So. Oh, oh, my goodness. And then you talked about your story about uh, being hospitalized with uh, ketoacidosis and um, end up going to hospital. So was this during the time of the you owned a landscaping company or being a college professor? 
Uh, it was owning the landscaping business as well as being a full-time employee. <laughs> <laughs> full-time employee, being a parent of, of two wonderful children. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a whole, you know, it's everything. I mean, and, you know, we try and do everything. Our, you know, it's, it's not easy for us to ask for help. So, we, you know, whether, whether, you know, if we're really driven, we think we can do everything. And sometimes we can but it comes at a cost. And uh, for me, it was, I, you know, I was trading my physical and emotional and mental health for my career. Mm. And that is, trust me, that is not a good trade. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, 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 that's why I decided that I would uh, uh, write the book because I figured it was, an, you know, uh, the epiphany that I had was actually when I got transferred, when, when, I, when I was admitted into the ER with that diabetic ketoacidosis, uh, after about uh, 24 hours, they transferred me into ICU. And it was the very first time I was ever in ICU. Wow. Because, you know, as an as a, uh, athlete, you find yourself in the emergency room here and there when you, you know, break a bone, something happens. So, I, you know, I knew the emergency room, but I didn't know the ICU. And... There I was uh, a day after a day into the ICU, and at 6 a.m. in the morning on a Tuesday, I remember, my boss at the time for the full-time job that I had actually texts me and says, hey, you have a webinar you need to run at 8 o'clock this morning. Ouch. What are you going to do? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> there I am. And so, you know, all I had was my, my iPhone, and I'm sitting there going, oh, my gosh. And I started uh, doing everything I could to try and reschedule that webinar and pushing the envelope as much as possible because the phone, you can only do so much on it. And what I noticed was, you know, they, the, the hospital staff was checking my blood every 30 minutes. Oh, wow. And it had been, it was coming down uh, because uh, my glucose numbers had been skyrocketing when I got admitted. And so they were coming back, coming down over time, being back in the hospital, getting in the, um, I had taken initially, believe it or not, in the first uh, two hours of being in the hospital, six liters of fluid. That's how dehydrated I was. Um, and so there I was trying to reschedule the webinar and they go and they check my blood. And I'm not kidding you. My uh, glucose numbers had gone up. 210 points in the half an hour before uh, between that you know that current one and the one right before 210 uh, points which for someone who doesn't know what uh, uh, glucose and you know what the issues are there 210 is extreme that 210 is bad if you actually just have 210 I'm telling you my numbers went up by 210 because it was coming down to about 150 so I was pushing um, you know, well over 300 at that point. And so it was not a, a good thing. And that was my epiphany. It was like, what am I doing to myself? Uh-huh. And, you know, the stress has that kind of an effect on your body. And it's crazy. And so I started doing all this research about stress at that point, And I realized, holy moly, what are, you know, what are, what are people doing today that they, you know, because they feel like they got to respond immediately to whatever it is their boss says or whatever's going on in their life. Yeah, that is something as well, too. We'll talk about your book in just a minute. You listen to The Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show. Give me her on the MikeWagnerShow.com. And check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, iTunes, Apple, and Google Play, as well as 
Anchor FM and Radio Public. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device and subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on YouTube as well. We're here at Professor Pete Alexander, stress relief expert who worked in sales, marketing, served as college professor at many universities in the California area, small business owner of landscaping, and just told about his um, how he got in the hospital. And this led him to the book called on Amazon, Lighten Your Day, Fast, Easy, and Effective Stress Relief for When it happens. So before we get into all that, uh, tell us about the book and uh, how'd you come up with that name? <laughs> That's a great question. So um, when I started doing the research about uh, what was stress going on, you know, what, what people were doing to it, I, what I ended up doing was I started looking at different techniques that would help me first because I had to do something. Uh, my, my stress was off the charts. So I started experimenting with different tools, techniques. And what I noticed was not only was my stress going down, but my glucose numbers started going down, my weight started going down, and my energy started going way, way up. So it was almost as if I had, you know, discovered the fountain of youth, to be honest with you. And so I started seeing, wow, there's all these different techniques. And there wasn't anything out there that said, okay, um, how about trying all these different types of tools that don't take very long because something that works for me won't necessarily work for you, Mike, right. and vice versa. So, you know, a book that, you know, a full book on meditation or a full book on deep breathing or a full book on visualization is fine if that works for you, but what happens if it doesn't? Mm-hmm. So, so I thought, okay, Somebody like myself who is under the gun has, you know, is going into a stressful meeting or a presentation or has to deal with something in the now and has like two or three minutes. What can they do? Well, how about a book that they can keep handy if they've got like the Kindle version or if they've got um, the print book available to them where they can take one minute, read about a tip, try it out and go from there. Mm -hmm. And that's why I decided to do this. And um, the title came out because lighten your day uh, has actually two meanings. Lighten means, you know, from from if you just listen to that word, obviously it's getting something off your shoulders and and not not have such a heavy day. But lighten is also an acronym. And it's an acronym for a trademark technique for long-term stress relief that I developed, which stands for L for, um, for livelihood or your career. I is your imagination or your conscious mind. Uh, the uh, G, G is for your genius or your unconscious mind where the real, real change happens. H is for your health, your personal health. T is the time you have available. E is your environment. And N is your network of relationships. Wow, interesting. So you need to have all of those. Yeah, so you have to have all of those available and in some sort of alignment in order to get long-term stress relief. Now, of course, you know, some there as each day or something comes up, you need to focus more attention on one area of your life. Absolutely. But over time, if you can make sure that each of those are addressed, that's where you're going to get your long-term stress relief. And, and, and what are some of the signs of stress uh, that a person should look out for? Yeah, well, one of the, one of the areas is, you know, if you're listening to your body, you're going to see that there's certain things like aches and pains, headaches, um, just irritableness. If you notice that, uh, you know, your conversations that you're having with loved ones, you tend to get set off really fast. Those are things that usually are indicators that you're under some sort of stressful load. That's a quick one. Um, the, you know, in terms of physical and uh, more dangerous is if you're going in for uh, you know a regular checkup with your doctor and your doctor starts saying that hey you know what your blood pressure seems to be going up or you know more so than than normal or your glucose numbers like for me my my doctor said you know your glucose numbers are going up uh, and I, again I ignored them uh, you know but that was your body telling you that there is a problem and the issue that we have is our bodies are the same bodies that were designed back in the Stone Age. So, you know, our fight or flight that I'm sure your listeners have heard about where, you know, we were designed to 
outrun, let's say, a saber tooth tiger or a uh-huh. T Rex or something like that, right? Oh yeah, I've heard those classic yeah. stories. <laughs> you, you bet. Well, the the challenge there is it was a short term need. So you know, the our our when we were under that stress, you know, the adrenaline and the cortisol that was dumped into our bodies was there to be able to deal with that issue at that time. Unfortunately, nowadays, because most of our stress is coming to us mentally that we're doing to ourselves, it's self-imposed. What ends up happening is we mentally, when we're mentally stressed, we're actually dumping that cortisol, dumping that adrenaline into our bodies. And what happens is over time, what that does is it causes cellular inflammation. And cellular inflammation is what actually gives us those long-term dangerous diseases such as diabetes, heart disease, cancer, etc. Mm-hmm. And, and also, well, there's so many other chemicals in the bodies that can also um, trigger stress and also cause stress. I'm sorry. Uh, say the that the, the, the ca- chemicals in your body, well, there's so many other chemicals. You mentioned a few, and is there any others that you might be on to look out for causing stress or whatsoever? No, cortisol and adrenaline are the two big ones. They are, okay. And, and, and of course, we detected um, the signs, signs of stress. And how do you manage to detect stress, and how do you manage it? So one of the things that I do with my clients is when they, they come to me and they want to talk about it, I actually have some uh, online uh, um, diagnostics that they can use to measure that. And it takes, you know, these, these diagnostics are ones that will ask 40, 50 questions approximately. And what it does is it's a self-diagnostic that helps them to, you know, determine, okay, what is their level of stress? And, you know, if their level of stress, based on being honest with those, those questions and answers, <laughs> is, you know, they, that, they have to do that. Because if you're, if you're in, uh, you know, if you're in utopia and you're not, if you're in complete denial about your stress and you lie on the questionnaire, that's not going to help you. Uh-huh. So that diagnostic tells you, okay, there's your stress level in, in the low, medium, high, and obviously, if you're in the high level of stress, then it's time to do some sort of interventions. And for somebody who, you know, wants to just kind of dabble in it and try, there's many different uh, tools that you can try. I do a weekly blog that uh, describes things that you can do basically in one to two minutes, literally, mm-hmm. that can help you apply it, give it a try. And what I try with my students uh, and, 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 and clients is... Let them know that, hey, if you can find one or two techniques that work for you, stick with those because those are your go-to techniques. I mean, it could be as simple as, uh, you know, somebody has just dropped a stack of work on your desk or you just get this nasty email or something like that, you know, before letting that just completely overwhelm you, maybe it's just taking a few deep breaths. That takes less than a minute, uh-huh. and that can help you just at least calm yourself before, you know, reacting to the situation. So something like that could be be as simple. One for you know those us in these days of technology. One that's absolutely critical is to detox from technology because you know our cell phone that's our electronic leash, mm-hmm. and you know if we're responding to messages. In, not only during the day, but in the evening, on the weekends, on your vacation, mm-hmm. the effect is you never really stopped working. And you haven't given your mind or your body the necessary time to recharge. And that happens. And so what I always recommend men to the, to the people that I work with is Figure out a way, you know, there's times during your weekends, there's times during the day where you are not responding to anything. And, you know, sometimes it requires going, you know, going camping where you can't get Wi-Fi or cell signal. Or it's taking a spa day and leaving the phone, not in the locker, leave the phone in the car or leave it at home. Uh Don't because, you know, if it's in the locker, you're going to be tempted to look at it. If you're spending whatever that time is that you're spending to be connected with either yourself or your loved ones or doing something you really enjoy, you can't be constantly responding to work texts 
and messages. It's just it, it, it's, you're not going to be able to disconnect. Mm-hmm. And, and also, social media can also play in stress too. Do you, and how uh, high do you think it is uh, when it comes to stress, like percentage wise? Oh, I would say if you really start um, getting addicted to social media, that can add. It, 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 it's it, depending on what you're actually re- looking at. If you add, let's say, the negative news that we have mm-hmm. uh, as part of that, so if you're focused on the negative stuff, that is going to, easily. It's going to be fifty percent of what your what you're doing on social media potentially could be negative. Mm-hmm. And over time, that just has an effect on your mental state. It really is, and especially if your your own in your own personal life you're you, you know you're stressing about something in, in, in the important areas whether it's your career your relationships your family your personal health you know if you are uh looking at the negative stories or you're focused on things that you want to have but you're more jealous about it instead of being jealous about it you should be working on your own mental state so that you can address that in a in a very very effective and um, healthy way, because you can turn that mental state around with very very simple techniques. But you mm. need to do that instead of wallow in the negative, if that makes sense. And, and of course, you know, TV on the news as well too can also add to it. And do you think uh, what percentage would that be about? Oh boy, I would say that. And, I, you know, with the marketing background that I have, um, you know, if we pull back the, the curtain that, you know, it's the, the TV, you know, news in general, they need ratings. And so the vast majority of stories are going to be ones that are on the negative side. Why? Because that gets our attention mm-hmm. and that gets ratings. So easily you're going to have 75% of the news is going to be negative in, in some way. And that it's, it's just the way it is. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, what, you know, if you think about it, um, you know, you see somebody on uh, the side of the road in an accident, we can't help but look, right? right? It's a negative thing. We can't help but look. And what happens if we see somebody, you know, bleeding or something like that? Ah, but we can't <laughs> help but look, right? It, it, it's and just a natural reaction. You're right. Exactly. And that's what happens with news as well. And mm-hmm. think about what, you know, the advertisements, most of the advertisements that get people's attention are things that are going to be on the negative. And so, you know, you, the more you expose yourself to that, the more it's going to have an effect on you over time. Mm-hmm. And of course, you and I can agree as well, too, that uh, watching a comedy reduces your stress level. I, I, I know it does on some. So and hopefully you watch a lot of comedies and everybody has to watch yeah. a comedy. So, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Laughter. They say laughter is the best medicine. And it absolutely is. And in fact, here's something that um, is a technique that I, I always recommend if you give it a try. You don't absolutely have to have um, the uh, uh, something funny to laugh. You can actually get the benefits of laughter just by laughing without anything being funny. And the reason is is because your body doesn't know that something's funny. It just knows <laughs> that you're laughing, and it, it, it's you know it's called laughter yoga. <laughs> and so you can actually, you know, there's a technique that I, I talk about in the book that I think is great. I've used it where, you know, let's say you get a bill in the mail that you normally would just go, ah, oh, crap. And you get all upset about it. Instead, look at the look at the bill and start laughing about it and laugh for 30 seconds. Just force yourself to laugh and then see how or feel what you feel after that. And it is very cathartic. Mm, that is amazing. I have to uh, look at my electric and water bill and just laugh at it. I think everybody should do that, <laughs> even credit cards and car loans and everything else. So, <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. I, 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 think yeah. that's, I think that's great, too. And, of course, um, once again, Professor Pete Alexander, author of the um, brand new book, Lighten Your Day, Fast, Easy, and Effective Stress Relief for When Shit Happens. It's on Amazon right now. And just a couple of things. Uh, we know you're very busy and uh, would like to have you back on again soon. Who's a, who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Who's been my biggest influence in my career? That's a, 
That's a great question. Um, give me a second here to think about that. You know, for, well, you know, in my, in my current working with in the stress relief field, um, there is uh, somebody who I really admire. His name is uh, Travis Bradbury, and I follow him on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's just does a lot of good work around, um, you know, making sure that, you know, posting these quotes, you know, positive quotes, et cetera. And he's done a lot of uh, uh, research similar to mine. And so he's been somebody that has, has influenced my, my current career. That is amazing as well, too. What's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? I, say that again because you cut what? out again. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Um, what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Best advice would be to not uh, ignore your stress. And the reason is is because if you ignore your stress, I'm, I'm a walking, talking example of this, it is going to eventually bite you. And mm. for me... It was getting first the stress-induced diabetes and then later the severe diabetic ketoacidosis. Sadly, it can get even worse than that because I, I tell people about one of my dear friends, um, uh, Ken, that I knew from high school. And Ken and I were best friends for 30 years. Wow. And, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And he, um, he and I, we met in high school. We served as each other's best mans at our weddings. Mm-hmm. We supported each other as new fathers. And then 20 years later, you know, fast forward, uh, Ken was struggling both in his personal and professional uh, areas. And he ended up, like me, he ended up in the hospital, in the emergency room. Oh, my. But he had, in, yeah, he had intestinal cancer. Mm. And they ended up having to remove two-thirds of his intestines. Oh, my goodness. And, yeah. And then he ended up going through a very rigorous chemotherapy uh, uh, regimen. And on many occasions, we talk about it. And Ken would tell me that he was absolutely convinced that his stress caused his cancer. Wow. And two weeks before his 49th birthday, Ken passed away because of his disease. Oh, my gosh. I'm so sorry. Yeah, and so that's what I want want my listeners, your listeners, everyone who uh, I get in touch with, I just want them to know that the relationships in our life matter, and you really, really need to take uh, consideration with the stress. And even if it's trying just one simple technique, taking action like that, can make a difference. And if you take action and you start reducing your stress, your loved ones will thank you because you are going to take action to avoid potentially life-changing health issues. Mm -hmm. And it's something very important as well, too. And Professor Pete, I'd like to thank you for your time. You've been fantastic. And I'm sure you lower the stress levels on everybody, and including myself as well, too. Author of the new Amazon book, Lighten Your Day, Fast, Easy, and Effective Stress Relief for When Shit Happens. And uh, also tell everybody what's your upcoming projects, what's your website, how do people contact you, and once again, where can they purchase the book? Sure. So uh, I've got uh, presentations coming up. Uh, in fact, i got a, a, a one in uh, an HR conference in Canada, in Kelowna next month, um, talking about uh, – uh, how to uh, not let stress kill you. <laughs> um, and so not a laughing business, but you know what? We talked about laugh, uh, laughter yoga. Um, and uh, if they'd like to reach out and contact me, I re- highly recommend just coming to my website. It's PeteAlexander.com, P-E-T-E-A-L-E-X-A-N-D-E-R.com. Uh, my blog, I do a weekly video blog, which is one to two minutes on a new technique. So they can go ahead and subscribe for free to that. And for the book, they can just uh, do a search on Amazon for Lighten Your Day. It it comes in both uh, or in Kindle, printed version, as well as an audio version. That is amazing. And Pete, just want to say a big thank you for your time. You've been fantastic. You look forward to having you on again soon. And uh, please do us a favor and keep us up to date. Mike, thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Had fun. And thank you to your listeners for their time as well.
Thanks for listening to the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Listen online at themikewagnershow.com and on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. And watch the interview on YouTube. Also, become a sponsor of the program and or donate today at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again tomorrow for another episode of The Mike Wagner Show.